Holy Eucharist right to you begins in your order of worship. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses. Grant that we, encouraged by the good example of your servant, Emily Cooper, may persevere in running the race that is set before us, until at last we may with him attain to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become a plain, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, and the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is the portion of Psalm 27. Let's read it in unison. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon the rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with great sounds of gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. When you speak in my heart and say, Seek my face, your face, Lord, will I seek. This stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should not be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Christianity and the church as a body is one that always evolves and changes, but sometimes at a greater speed or with more drastic results. And the most greatest and radical shift that we have experienced is probably the one that happened in the 16th century with what we today call the Protestant Reformation. Throughout the Western Church, typically by country or region, reformers seeded whole new traditions. While each new tradition had its own character,
character, by and large, most took a really hard look at traditional church roles, from bishops to other, other offices downward. Many roles were changed or eliminated, monastic communities closed, religious orders dissolved, and church governance and hierarchy were overhauled. Most newly created traditions ironically did away with one of the oldest offices of the church, that of the deacon, named in the New Testament as those chosen from the ranks of the disciples to assist the of disciples and apostles in ministering to the Church of Christ. The Church of England, the parent of the Anglican tradition and the Episcopal Church, was no exception. For us here in the U.S., deacons were first reintroduced to the Church in the mid-1800s, which included ordaining men for specific ministries or mission work. At the same time, a second movement began, setting women apart for ministry in what was then a completely separate order of deaconesses, women who received training to serve in all kinds of settings, the first four to be set apart in 1857. Between 1857 and 1970, when the women who were admitted to ordination as vocational deacons, there were some 500 women who became deaconesses, most around the turn of the century towards the First World War. And it is one of those women we honor tonight, Emily Cooper, who was first admitted to the office in June of 1873. She was a widow at the age of 44 and moved from Louisville, Kentucky to Brooklyn, New York to train and serve at St. Mary's Episcopal Church, the epicenter of the Deaconess movement. Not long after she was commissioned, Bishop Benjamin Bosworth Smith of Kentucky called her to return home and named her director of a new institution, the Home of Innocence. Founded by the Diocese of Kentucky, the home was established to care for children who were orphaned or otherwise unable to live with their families. Housing as many as 50 children at a time, Cooper did hard and important work with terminally ill children as well as those who had suffered from neglect or abuse. She named and sponsored over 200 children for baptism. She also ensured that those terminally ill children who would not see adulthood receive honorable burial, if their families were able to pay for it or not. And she did this incredible work for over 40 years, work that was all but forgotten until the early 2000s. Much of Emily's story is unknown. Like many of the far more ancient saints, we have only fragments of the gift that she was to the world and how she served God and the church, as well as probably hundreds if not thousands of children. But what we have of her story stands as a piece of history, an example of how much difference is possible in a single lifetime. Her story, however fragmented, as well as those of the 500 some other odd women, is also an important chapter of the story of the Episcopal Church, however unsung, that has shaped the life and ministry of this particular branch of the Jesus movement, as presiding Bishop Michael Curry likes to call us. How will our lives be an example to those who come after us, if we are known or not? And how will we be a part of the story? Amen. Turning in your bulletin or to page 358, let us stand together and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. To the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found in your order of worship, or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful in the truth of the word and friendship. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may be faithful in sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their afflictions. Give to the departed eternal rest. That life perpetual. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly peace. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Continuing in your bulletin or turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my friends, peace. Peace. Hey, y'all, welcome. Go ahead and have a seat. It's great that someone's here. I'm glad I'm not alone. Thank you for being the constant troopers. Thanks to those of you who are joining us online or later. I'm grateful that you're taking the time to pray with us in this Easter season. Uh, Sunday, business as usual at 10 a.m. here. Uh, next week, we will be back here, same bat channel, same bat time at 6 o'clock for Eucharist. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice. Eucharistic prayer 2 begins in your order of worship. Please stand as your people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is water to give him thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. 
Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole creation, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and with Emily Cooper and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people.
This communion prayer can be found in the Word of Worship or on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Friends, remember, God made you, God sees you, God knows you, and God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.